Hi everyone and welcome to today's game art episode in our UE4 tutorials. In this episode we're going to take a look at the rotate about axis node and how we can use this to make objects spin on the spot in a very cheap and efficient manner. So what we've got here is a fan so I'm going to make the ceiling fan spin using just the material and the way this works is we're using the world position offset. So if you open up a material about halfway down you'll see the option for a world position offset. Now what this does is it changes the rendering of the vertices in the vertex shader um, to a different location essentially uh, which makes it very cheap because the vertex shader runs on the GPU uh, a lot cheaper than say an animation does. Okay so if you can get away with it use the world position offset. The downside it does have is because it's just changing the rendering of the image, not the actual object itself, the physical space it occupies doesn't change. So if you made it move away from its original location, you would be able to walk through it because the collision mesh is back where it originally was. So if you need something that is going to be something you collide with, then you can't do it like this. However, if you've got something quite simple like a ceiling fan, which doesn't have to worry about collision so much, uh, you can use this technique to solve that problem. So the node in question we're talking about today is the rotate about axis node. Okay, it takes four variables and we'll go through each one of them and show you how it all works. So the first one is the normalized rotation axis. And this is basically the direction it's going to rotate around. So what axis do you want to use? Now, because we want it to spin on the spot, we're going to use the object's uh, orientation. And the object orientation respects the rotation of the current object, no matter how you rotate it in the world. Um, we'll show you in a second what it looks like without this and what, how this fixes the issue. Um, alongside that, we need to then rotate this about a vector, so rotate vector, because then you want to change it based on a particular axis that you define of how you want to rotate it. So the result will plug into normalize rotation axis, and the look at vector will go to a three, uh, three vector, which you can get by holding down three and left clicking or searching for constant three vector. So this three vector will change uh, what axis you want it to uh, use. And this is local, and this converts, uh, this is the rotation of it, this is the local axis, and this converts the two together to give you a normalized rotation axis in the world. Okay, um, so if I change this one to use the Z axis, and if you don't already know, RGB refers to X, Y, Z. So we use the Z axis. So I'm typing 1. It's normalized, which means it goes between 0 and 1. So 1 will be fine. Okay, so now it's going through, or going down. Okay, so it's going to spin around uh, on that axis. Next is the rotation angle. And this is how much it's been rotated by. Now you can put in a fixed value and it will just fix it and rotate it to that particular value. However, what we can do is we're going to put in a time node in this and plug that straight in. And that allows it to constantly update and rotate on the spot. The pivot point is the point of which it's gonna rotate, actually do the rotation. So we're gonna use the object's pivot point because again, we want it to rotate on the spot no matter where it is in the world. So we can use the object's pivot point. So just type in pivot point and you should see object pivot point. And the pivot point, if you don't know what that is, if you it's this gizmo you see in the middle, that's the pivot point. Okay, so it's going to be rotating around that point there. Otherwise, you can give it some coordinates and it will rotate around those coordinates. And finally is its position. Whereabouts do you want it to uh, rotate? So here we're going to type in just world position. And it's going to rotate wherever it's been positioned in the world. We're now going to plug that into world position offset and hit apply. Now you should see this window update here and you should see it spinning on the spot, like so. Now the speed it spins is determined by the period value on the rotator bar axis. So you see here on the left hand side when you've got it selected it says period. One refers to how long it takes to do a full rotation. So it's one second, okay. So it's spinning once every one second. If 
If I were to turn that down to half a second, it means it's now going to spin faster. Okay, so it's going to, it has to spin one rotation for half a second. Okay, so a lot faster. But if I want to slow it down, I just make the number higher. So like 10, for example. So that will now take 10 seconds for it to do one full rotation. So if you want a slow moving fan like we've got, we can just put that in. Okay. Hit apply. So now you can see the fan is now spinning. So we can take this one step further and show how you can do this to parts of an object. So I'm going to import now a different fan, this time with a grate around it. So I'm going to go and import that in. And when you import this in, um, well, first of all, let's show you how I made it. In uh, This is in Maya, and you can do this in Blender, you can do it in any 3D modeling software, um, but you want to do a vertex coloring. Now, what's quite important here is that you want to make sure that the thing you want to spin is of one color. I've chosen red, uh, but you can choose green or blue. Uh, you can even do white in this case, but if you do it one color, it gives you options later on to do uh, other animations, different effects and things like that with uh, the other vertex colors. But anyway, here is a, a red vertex colored um, object, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this, import this in with these vertex colors. So in Unreal, when you go to import something in, you have the option to see vertex color import options. Now, by default, it's hidden, so you might have to show the advanced. And when you click on the drop down, you have three options. So replace means it's going to import the colors from the FBX file, which is what we want. Ignore is it's just going to ignore all the colors from the FBX and just keep whatever um, colors it may have already on it. That's if you're mostly like re-importing. And then you'll override. And override is if you want to override it with a color that you define here. So here I'm going to change this to replace and hit import. So if I open this up now, we can see, if I click on vertex colors, you can see it's important now the color red for the fan here and the rest of the grate is now black. So I want it to only rotate the red part. So let's give it my spin material. Now, as you can see, it's rotating all of it. To make it only spin the red part, we're gonna go into our spin material and after the rotate bar axis, we're going to right click and search for the vertex color input, uh, input. And we'll take the red pin and multiply this by our rotate about axis. And that means that anything that is of the vertex color red, will this will be applied to it. Okay. And that also applies to white as well. White is a combination of all three of them. So if something's colored in white, it'll also do it as well. So if I hit apply now, you should see that the fan will move, but not the casing around it. Let me just drag that out. There you go. Okay. And we can put that on like a wall or something. Like that. Okay. Now, when I've done that, you notice I've broken this one. Okay, that's because the vertex coloring for this is black. So how do we make this bit red? Well, I'm gonna go over to my right hand side in my static edit in my static mesh editor. I'm gonna just search the details box here for vertex color. And I'm gonna change that to override and make the color here red. So make it one in red. Yeah, okay. And then click re-import base mesh. And now you can see the vertex color has now switched to red which means it will now spin. There you go. And that's the rotate about axis node. Very, very powerful, very, very useful to use world position offset. And this is super cheap. Okay, so you can have loads of these in the game and it won't really slow down anything. Okay. And there you have it. And that will do us for the world position offset for today. If you have any specific requests in regarding materials, game art, or anything else you'd like to see on the channel, leave a comment below. Always interested to see what people want to see next. And if you want to support me and my channel, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey, where you can find videos well before anyone else, access to Discord, and as well as many other benefits such as project files as well. Thank you so much for everyone who's supporting me so far. 
uh, this wouldn't be possible without you guys, so thank you again so much. Anyway, that's enough for me. Uh, have a good evening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>